Yesterday in Parliament, the Tory MP Andrew Bridgen spoke out against the World Health Organization's upcoming treaty that will centralise all public health policies on a global level. Now, there are not many people in Parliament these days like Andrew Bridgen, who's actually speaking out against the, the rise of centralisation and establishment and big government. And he's actually very sound on this issue because uh, he decided to speak out against the WHO treaty thing, which we actually reported a while ago on this channel. That's still ongoing. Uh, as a reminder, this is what they came up with. And uh, the latest update uh, was the 29th of March, 2023. Uh, the House of Commons Library, uh, the, the research briefing paper said, uh, what is the proposed WHO pandemic uh, preparedness treaty? It's in the name of preparing for upcoming uh, dangers and pandemics and all that. But in reality, they are centralizing all public health policies and it's going to go uh, to the centralized machine. That is WHO. But the problem with it is that, as Andrew Bridgen mentions in this speech, which I'm going to show you in a second, is it's not really the perfect organization to be responsible for this. And it's going to take away a lot of sovereignty of individual countries, considering that each country has different requirements in terms of geography, in terms of the climate, in terms of the population, in terms of demographics and the, 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 the governmental structures. You can't really have a blanket policy for all countries and governments at once. And of course, the control freaks, the elites want more power because it will, be, it will make their life easier, but our life much harder. Let's go to this video we have from yesterday in Parliament, uh, the, the Westminster Hall debate that Andrew Bridgen participated in. Um, and so it's a special status. It's employees are, are exempt from tax and uh, they and their families all have diplomatic uh, immunity. It is mm. indeed a, a supranational body, unelected uh, and, and unaccountable. Um, I think my constituents would, would fear that. Yep. Um, how is the WHO set up? Well, it has something called the, the World Health Assembly. Mm. Uh, it meets yearly in Geneva. It's a legislative and supreme decision-making body of the WHO. It elects the Secretary General, the Executive Board, and votes on, on policy and, uh, and, um, of, of the uh, WHO. And uh, the current uh, chairperson of the World Health Assembly of the WHO is a gentleman by the name of Harsh Vardhan. Mm. In, in 2021, uh, Mr. Sharma, the Indian Medical Association, the Indian version of the, uh, the BMJ, the largest association of doctors in India, mm -hmm. issued a statement when he objected to, to Vardhan, who was uh, endorsing uh, uh, Coronil, a, a product uh, that, that was being made in India. The, the IMA, the Indian Medical Association, questioned the ethics of wow. a health minister, Mr. Vardhan, the health minister at the time, of that country to release uh, a, a fabricated and unscientific product onto the people of India. That's crazy. He's since gone on to become chairperson of the WHA, who are going to be presiding over this, this new treaty that's going to be uh, uh, sitting before every government in the world. Uh, given that he resigned from the cabinet in India yeah. over this controversy, why has he ever been trusted with greater responsibility? It seems he's failed upwards. Yeah. like many at the WHO and the w WHA. That's actually a very good point. And that usually applies to all international, super international bodies like the European Union, the United Nations. Failed politicians end up actually getting a promotion and they get on a new gravy train. So the original ideals of the WHO were, were completely laudable. Mm. The WHO is to, to serve the health of the people. It's uh, governed by its, its member states. Yep. That, who will implement health policy in the interest of our people. Um, state sovereignty and the rule of law will be respected. That's under Article 3 of the International Health Regulations, before they're amended. People's self-determination will be fully respected. All human rights, conventions and other uh, acts will be respected that countries have joined up to. That was protected under, under Article 54 of the original uh, um, human, uh, regulations of human rights. But who's now funding the WHO? That's a good question. Like many of our, our regulators in the UK, this is the, main the MHRA, 86% funded by industry sources. The Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation and their personal declarations, they declared over a billion pounds yeah. of interests in Big Pharma. The, 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 the thing they were set out to regulate. This undermines public confidence. Well, the WHO now is no longer 
anything like majority funded by its member states, yep. the people who it is seeking to control. It's 86% funded by external sources. Scandals. I'm not sure that um, my, my honourable friend uh, for Winchester is, is, is correct. Uh, the UK is not the, th the third largest donor. Nope. Uh, the, uh, the second largest donor is the third largest donor. The second largest donor after Germany is the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, uh, Foundation. Yep. And I think Gavi is the fifth. So we have those together. That is, they are the biggest donors to the, the WHO. And you have to think, why, why are they doing this? They're also the, the biggest donors or, or biggest uh, investors in, uh, in, in pharmaceuticals and the, uh, the experimental mRNA technology, which, yeah. which proved so prof profitable for those who uh, proposed it and produced it during the, during the last pandemic. That is a very, very good point. Yeah, when it comes to the external stakeholders getting involved, uh, it's no longer the member states' contribution that is uh, dominating this organization. It's actually the outsiders who, are, who have their own, of course, the interest, vested interest and many other areas. And it just questions the whole legitimacy of the organization. Okay, is, it, is it actually accountable anymore? Is it at least semi-democratic? Can we actually have a say as individual people or even, even as a government? Even if you have a government in this country that wants to speak out against uh, something, question something at the WHO, but you can't anymore because we're not really running any of it. And that is the biggest problem. And um, I want to absolutely praise uh, Andrew Bridgen for speaking out and uh, expose this flaw in the system which is run by those with their own agenda anyway let me know what you think in the comment section i'm maya tusi and we are the media